Hello there! Once again, this is Anton from Anton Bay, and I've been busy getting some mail. Um, I got a bunch of little bitty lots of comics here that I've got for real cheap, and a couple of like big random lots of just what they call bad girl comics. I always enjoy bad girl comics. Um, it's usually, if you get a random lot of bad girl stuff, it's usually a bunch of books you've never heard of, and some you have, and usually it's pretty, pretty goofy stuff. Um, first, I got this little lot. Um, it was like nine bucks, but it came with uh, Gold Key Star Trek for 35 cents, uh, Star Trek The Motion Picture, and they all shipped in these double-sided bags. And if you've ever wondered why you shouldn't do that, I got one of these. Uh, this was in there. This was like in one of the bags. I got to get these all separated, but um, there's a smooth side to the backboard and then there's that rough side. This is a comic that's been printed on the back side. I'm not sure what that book is, but yeah, that is why you don't double peg your comic books. Don't ever double bag your comic books. That other side of that backboard is not made to come into contact with your comic. Anyway, I thought that was cool and I wanted to show that. Um, we also got uh, Terminator 2 and we got like Cry for Dawn number one. This is a book I've kind of always wanted. Um, I've never never really read much Dawn comics. I get them every now and then just because the art's amazing. Uh, I got America's Best Comic, Stories of Tomorrow and a Tom Strong. And there was a Turok, one of two. Looks like I got two of two. I got the whole little mini series there. Got another issue of Dawn. This one's number two, so I think I just got Dawn one and two. Came with a Lady Pendragon, number one. Came with Asylum, number two. Uh, I think I got a couple of this comic lately. And a Lady Rawhide, one of five. I never read these. I just remember the ads for Topps Comics um, promoting this book uh, back in the 90s and stuff. Anyway, that was a little lot. It was like nine bucks. I'm like, you can't go wrong for that. Not for that pile of stuff. Um, recently in one of my videos, I came across a title called Shattered Earth. And I had never heard of it. It's from the X-Mutants universe. And I immediately started hunting this down to see if I could find some more. I did. I found like a little, little stack. It looks like nine issues of it. I believe that's all there was. And I just had to get it. It turns out, I've started reading them now. Um, I just, I, the first four issues, I, I read them, I really liked them, but I hadn't read them by the time I, I had kind of run through them in a video. It's really just a bunch of short stories. There's like three short stories in this issue and three short stories in another issue that's um, just like what's going on after the world went to crap with different people, uh, different factions. And so you can just grab a couple issues and get like three complete stories out of it. And I really thought that was good. Really liked it. The art kind of bounces around because you get different artists working on different short stories. But anytime you have like uh, short stories, like uh, Alien Encounters is another book from PC Comics that, that did this type of thing. And um, I'm trying to think what the others were. Like Vanguard Illustrated, things like that, that just did short stories. I always love that. It's always the same scimitar ad in every single one of these, one of these books. But I ended up getting like issues one through nine of this, and I was very pleased to get that. Especially because I just found out about this just maybe a week ago or so. Found out that this comic existed. So I was super pleased that I was able to find a lot on eBay for not a whole lot. These were actually pretty cheap. I think I paid like, I want to say like 14 for the whole set. Which is worth it if it's a good comic, and I'm I'm down with it. Just short stories of of after the apocalypse stuff. Um, there's a book I've been wanting to share, but I only had the first issue, and I found a set and I ordered I ordered the set because it's issues one and two. It's in the vein of the Ninja Turtle knockoff, but it is Sultry Teenage Super Foxes by uh, Solson Publishing. Basically, it's kind of like Ninja Turtles in the way that it's just four people who like suddenly get powers. But in this case, it's just four cheerleaders who then suddenly get like superpowers. 
It's ridiculous. It's it's so stupid. But that's what's funny about it. And I don't know, Solson. I, I don't have a lot of Solson comics, but the whole little logo guy always cracked me up. And as far as I can tell, they only made two issues of this. The art in it's good. The story is just appropriately ridiculous, as it should be. But it's just it's a comic I've been wanting to get like as like the full run of. And of course, there's only two, so the full run was easy to get. But I got I got the number one a long time ago, and I keep wanting to put it in a video, but I just haven't really figured out which one to add it to. And then I, I got these in the mail today, so I got both both Solson comics, uh, Sultry Teenage Super Foxes, and it's it's just a goofy little book. Next, we're gonna tie into one of my stacks of uh, Bad Girl comics. Uh, some of these look great, some of them are crap. I paid about thirty-five bucks uh, for fifty, and I got like two piles of fifty. Um, this Octavia, I love the cover. That kind of I don't know what you call that, but it looks like something would be like from the 70s. It's a 70s style art. And the interior art looks pretty 70s as well. Um, very comic strip type panel looking stuff, but thought it looked pretty cool. Can you hear the jet? I can hear the jet. Anyway, um, uh, we got uh, Cinder number two. I think there's only like three issues of Cinder that I've ever been able to find. It's a good comic. I will always take doubles of it because it was so rare. And we got a book called Spandex Tights Presents, which I thought sounded goofy. I didn't really remember seeing it in the lot, but the art's good. I'm sure it's appropriately stupid. I just, I'd never heard of it. It's number one, throw it in the pile. That's, I'll take it. Uh, or in the, it just came in the lot, I should say. Um, the Wicked, this cover just looks gross because look at this arm. It's ridiculous. It's a big, big goofy arm. The art inside is good. It's black and white. I can't remember the year on this thing. I really like this, uh, it's like, uh, uh, what do they call it? Easter Island head looking guy. The Moai. Looks like a Moai head. Anyway, I thought that was really cool. I was excited about that. I got another PC comic that I've never heard of. Um, it's all like new excitement from the Stone Age to the Space Age. It's Vanity Number One, and it is some great art inside. Amazing colors, all that stuff. This right here, though, I cannot pronounce Will Mignot. I can't remember how to pronounce his name. Will Mignot. This is the guy who wrote Exo Squad, the cartoon, and animated it, and. Oh my gosh, he has done so much work in some of the some of the best cartoon shows like ever. I am so amazed that I have one of his comics, uh, Vanity Number One. Very impressed. Um, because it, it it was in it was in a lot. This I also got a copy of Eternity, The Witch Number One, which is it looks like a really racy, naughty cover thing, and it probably was intended to be. But what it really is inside is it looks to be um, some sort of serial like a comic strip almost the love witch um usually if you've got uh, these headings like this this was like broken up into a magazine or something so i mean that's kind of odd it's old try to see what the year is on this thing 1989 anyway there's that it came in the pile it's chick and there's a dinosaur slash dragon right there too that's always a bonus um, Caliber Comics, uh, Jonas number one. The art is good. It looks a little bit pixelated, like maybe that's been done with a like a computer. But Sepulcher, I don't know how to pronounce that. Sepulcher. It is that really weird, like graphic painty. I mean, it's like I. I I don't even know how to describe it. It's that faded chalk type art. Um, I don't know if it's like like pencils that's been like brushed or what, but it comes out looking weird. It's issue number two, comic I'd never heard of, came in the pile. Um, cauldron number one, very, uh, very heavy metal looking cover. And so is the inside art. 
It even comes with this, which I just thought was amazing. Had to share that. Uh, I got two issues of that. Just various covers is all. Um, got a Dynamite Comics, The Blood Queen. I've never heard of that one. I'm not a huge vampire guy, but they seem to put a lot of vampires in here. I got Lady Vampire Zero. Uh, Gray Shirt and Cobweb, number one, from America's Best Comics. I got Gene Simic Simmons comic book. Uh, Dominatrix, with an X. Dominatrix. Uh, some sort of clown fatale from Dark Horse. Adrenaline. I don't know what that is, but it's an image comic. It came in the pile. It came in a lot of bad girl comics. It looks bad. Um, I can only tell that this is like the same artist who was doing uh, The Tenth. Because it looks exactly like the art from The Tenth. Um, we've got... An issue of Demon Baby, number one. Ursa Minor, number five. Another copy of Cinder, uh, Cinder number one. I, I always, I always take a Cinder comic. I'll just always do it. Um, we got a Lady Vampire. I can't read that. I think it's black and white. Definitely black and white. Uh. Okay, Raptures, Raptus, Dead of Night. I can't, I can't even read that cover. That's that's nuts. Uh, Zendra number three, looks like an Aeon Flux type character. Uh, I I just acquired one of these recently. This is uh, Cinder and Nira, uh, number one of their second series. Vampire PA, number one. I got another issue of Vampire PA. Not a fan of vampire comics per se. I don't really care for the blood. Um, Babylon Crush. Another issue of Asylum. I know I've got several issues of this. They always throw it in. Anytime you buy a bad girl comic, uh, you'll find that in there. Uh, Skid Rose. Whatever that is. American Walmart. Don't don't. Hate that. Either that or it's American Roman. No, it's American Woman. Okay. I was, I was like, wait, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I guess I'm not wrong. Uh, we got uh, Donna Matrix, number one. See, this is what I was talking about. You could tell that that is definitely the 10th artist who was working on that other book. Arcania Ezra. Um, Extremes of Violet, issue number two. I've actually got a bunch of these. They're kind of stupid. I've got the first issue signed. I've got like signed copies of that. Kind of weird, um, but I do. Uh, more Nira. Nira Cyber Angel. I'm a fan of Nira, and it's it's crazy to me because I knew I had more interaction. I've seen more Nira product um, that was uh, action figures and and merch from the comic than I ever saw the comic. I never saw this comic anywhere, but there's comic book stores where you'll still see a Nira action figure hanging on the wall, and that's always funny to me because it's like, well, you got the action figure. Do you have any of the comics? No. Nobody does. Nobody ever does. Um, we got a Marvel comic in there. Vengeance of Gen X. Uh, more stuff from the guy who did the 10th. Looks like Adrenaline, Weapon of War. Uh, the Blood Queen, another dynamite book. Blood Queen versus Dracula, number four. Another issue of the Blood Queen. Looks like a kind of a vampirella type character. Picked up another issue of Red Fox. I think I've got issue 11. Now I've got issue 12. It's one I'll always usually take. Um, an image comic called Sex and Violence. And of course it has Savage Dragon on the cover. You've got Eve Roto Mechanic from Top Cow. Um, Silk number two. Um, Sheila Trent, Vampire Hunter. <laughs> that looks kind of funny. Um, Serious Fang. I've actually got a couple issues of this. It is it is a weird, weird, uh, that type of penciled art type thing that's going on inside there. Another issue of Babylon Crush. Uh, Blood Queen number three from Dynamite. It looks like a different issue of Asylum. I always get the same issue. But anyway, those those were the comics in that. It, I mean, you can kind of see what what you're getting when you buy the lot. And there's a couple of titles that really stand out that I really wanted, and some that I was just like, whatever, it's in there. You know? 
Um, the next lot came with a set of Kabukis that I was quite interested to get. I've never had any of these comics. This is another um, comic that I never saw the comic, but I always see like action figures from the set. So I got Kabuki one, two, three, four, four. All the covers pretty much are not that exciting. And it's black and white stuff and it's, it's Asian. You know, samurai type themed type stories. But a book I've been, been wanting to get, and if I could get the whole set, and it came in the lot of all the other stuff. You know, some of these I don't. I don't have any idea. Um, this is weird, simply for how shiny and chromy every page is. I can't even express how, like, slick and weird that feels. Cat's Eye. Um, I get several issues of Cat's Eye every now and then. Cat's Eye Deity and stuff like that. It's a weird little goofy manga. It's like if Rob Liefeld was manga, he would draw stuff that looks like that. I always thought he looked like a like a like a Japanese Rob Liefeld. Um, Hard Case Crime, The Trigger Man. This is actually kind of a kind of a cool noir type book. Thought it was interesting. Cover painting is is pretty good. Urban Decay, Anubis Press. I've never heard of anything from Anubis Press before. The inside art looks nah, but. It came in the lot. It's not like I sought it out. It's different. Uh, Book of Ezra from Arcania, number one. You get a Wildstorm uh, Ridiculous Swimsuit comic, uh, number one. Executive Assistant Iris. Um, I've never seen this book. Looks like a little bit newer book than I normally grab. Aspen uh, Comics. Not something I'm terribly familiar with either. But that's why you get some of these big lots, because, you know, you never know what's in them. You're going to get a book that you've never seen, that you've never messed with. Prelude to Blue Dog. Uh, I don't see an issue number on it. So, I don't know. Um, another one of these. Rap Raptus something. Uh, more Blood Queen. They got me a pretty good stack of that. I got the High Impact Studios. Um, we got another issue of Blood Blood Queen, um, Super Zero, which looks like a DC book, but I don't think it is. It's some sort of Aftershock, I guess. I don't know. Maybe you can fill me in. This is um, the Valkyrie from Airboy. This is the new Valkyrie. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool because I haven't seen any of the new, new Airboy comics. It's black and white, but the pages are glossy. That's always good. So yeah. I was pleased to see that in the set. I got an issue of Telos, number one. Nice pirate lady on there. Uh, I got this weird Animagic LTD Studios uh, Danger Girls. And what I really think it is, I think this is just a rip off of the Dirty Pair. Because it, I mean, the art style looks the same, the character design looks the same, their hijinks are similar. I think it's just like kind of a knockoff Dirty Pair. And the fact that the work is dirty, but this pair is up to it. Uh, it either it, it it either is the dirty pair, or it's Danger Girls. I don't know. It's some sort of weird knockoff, I think. Uh, we got an Elemental swimsuit issue, which I thought was weird because um, I didn't know that Comico really did much of those. Uh, comic called Thirteen Coins, number four. Never heard of that. Um, the Gift, another comic that I've never heard of from another company I haven't heard of. We got uh, Elemental's Lingerie. Fantastic. That's what we all want. Um, I got Issue of Intrigue. I remember this thing new off the newsstand. Intrigue number one. Intrigue number two. And another issue of number two. I don't remember if it was any good. I don't remember if I ever bought it, but I do remember it. And that counts for something. Um, these look i kind of flipped through these look kind of awful um nancy and hell this is nancy and hell on earth number two and three the art is amazing um but uh, like this cover that's a cool cover nancy and hell number four i've never heard of these it's apparently an image title but they gave me a little pile of them they gave me duplicates of that in another set they gave me this weird, glossy, little squatty comic book. It's like short. I don't know what it, what the deal is with it or why it's smaller than the others. But 
I don't even remember seeing it in the in the lot in the description, but it was in there. Um, another copy of N Nera series two issue number two. Once again, if you look for Nera comics, they're not too hard to find, but her action figures are so much more uh, prevalent than her than her book ever was. There's quite a few of these like weird obscure '90s stuff where. The comic was hard to find, but the action figure was was easier to locate for some reason. I just thought that was crazy. Nera Soul Scourge, number one. Got another Nera book, uh, series two, number four. Um, uh, Batron, number three. Batron, number two, and Batron, number one. And I'm pretty sure this is like a like a set, and it's very. The art in it's pretty decent. It's not, you know, anything crazy and exciting, but seems to be some sort of a, you know, a foreign legion type adventure going on there. I thought that was neat. Um, I got a book called Hex of the Wicked Witch from Asylum Press. I don't remember what all Asylum did, but I just thought this was hilarious because why do you keep, like... Why do you have this witch wearing the big goofy witch's hat? That just seems stupid. I Maybe you're just trying to be like, you know, classic look, I guess, going on. But I don't know. I guess if you're going to have a witch and she's going to wear the big hat, that just seems kind of funny to me. Because this doesn't, this doesn't fit the traditional witch thing, but yet she's still wearing the big goofy hat. Got an issue of No World, number one. Got an issue of Ember, zero. Uh, the Lexicon Chronicles, number four, or five. Codename Knockout from Vertigo. Um, Rob Liefeld, uh, Wildstorm Swimsuit Special. Fallen Angels, number 19. And it looks like Vamp, Vampfire, number two. The big funny sticker on there. I haven't heard of that one, but... Anyway, that is the set of comics I got. That is the... The, the the mail that showed up this week. Anyway, don't double bag your comics. <laughs> I will say it again. Anyway, thanks for watching. That's my story. Catch you guys later. Bye.